Hey everyone, I'm Stephen Strawn at Cast Iron Cookware, where you can find information to help you better collect, restore, and use cast iron cookware. Today I'm going to try to do a short video and share my Birmingham Stove and Range Red Mountain and Century Series skillets with you, and I'm going to be doing that coming right up. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that has purchased my seasoning product, and the new name is Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning, because it is easy peasy to use. It is four ounces of beeswax, grapeseed oil, and avocado oil, all wrapped up in this nice, convenient little stick. And it is very handy to use, thus the name Easy Beasy, because it's easy peasy. I just want to say purchasing this product helps continue this channel to keep going. And I just want to say thank you so much for your patronage. So let's get on to the cast iron. Right here, I have my Century Series Birmingham Stove and Range skillets. And on the right, I have my Red Mountain Series. Now, I am still missing a few pieces, but I'm going to go ahead and share what I have. Let me pull the camera down so you can see what I'm doing. Let's pull my Century Series over here and pull them back. First of all, I have a number three Birmingham Stove and Range. And to start off, I just want to remind everybody, on the smaller skillets, maybe not so much on the large ones, on the 14s and the 12s, we have this telltale ridge with Birmingham Stove and Range right here. That is telltale. Now you will see something similar to this in the lodge. It'll get a little wider right here, but the Birmingham has this small ridge. And with the Century Series, we have the descriptive size right here. This one right here has the N-O dot and the number three, and it has the size of the skillet. Of course, we have the heat ring. And these have the smaller pour spouts. This is a nice little piece. It does not say made in USA, so it is a little bit older. I do want to say there is a huge misconception when it comes to the made in USA stamp. Uh, number one, they didn't stamp the skillets because you can't stamp that on there. But it was stamped into the mold and then the mold was poured, and then thus the, the Made in USA. But uh, the misconception is, after 1960, everything had to have the country of origin on it. That's not really the case. Actually, there was a tariff act back in the 1930s that uh, stated to have that done, but it wasn't really enforced, and, and uh, it wasn't that big of a deal at the time. But in the 60s, because the imports from Asian countries, uh, Taiwan, China, and even Japan, uh, the quality was fairly good. They were good at copying what we have done. And uh, there was a lot of competition going. So makers started putting the made in origin, which was made in USA, on the skillets because they were trying to make sure everybody knew their product was made in USA because at that time, Buy America was a big deal. And uh, it was a marketing strategy. And also at the time, a lot of the cast iron companies were struggling because people were starting to move to gas cooking. The coal and wood cooking had kind of went away. And the cast iron companies were struggling. Those that had a little bit of debt pretty much went out right away. But we do see that happening very heavily in the 60s as a hope to protect the business of the United States. And a lot of the companies did that. And it may have helped some. I'm not really sure because most of all the big cast iron makers went out of business in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. So back to the iron. Second on the list of my Birmingham stove and range, I have a number five, which is what a lot of people love to use for cornbreads. But this little number five, it doesn't have a made in USA on it, but it does have the heat ring, the telltale ridge and I did mention it earlier but there is a teardrop hanger hole on these and that is pretty if you look at it like this it looks more like a teardrop or a raindrop and that's pretty indicative of Birmingham Stove and Range. We we'll also have a little bitty number one in here and I believe that denotes that it is first shift. All of them do not have that. Now right here I have a number six I have a number six, and here we have the ridge, the teardrop hanger hole. It doesn't have made in USA. 
Now there are some utensil marks here. And if you notice, there's a little bit of a ridge on the Century Series pieces. Now we have another one. Now this here is slick as glass. This is another. It doesn't say made in USA, but it's really neat that this one here we have the inspection mark and the inspection mark could be a Phillips or a flathead screw. They would put this in the mold so that they could uh, monitor. It was like an inspection or a quality control mark. But just as the process of elimination, they would put this screw in, in a particular mold or pattern and they would look for issues whatever they were looking for at the time. Now this one doesn't have Made in USA either. But if you notice, this one is really slick. Now some of the really later pieces will be a little rough on this side. That was a number seven. Now here's a really cool piece. It's called an 8B7. There was a time where they done away with the 7 and the 8 and combined the two and made the 8B7. That made it possible for them to put more pieces out because the 7 and the 8 were the two highest runners ahead. By combining them, they was able to make it possible for them to run one of these on every mold, depending on how they done it. I don't know if they had more than one 7 at a time or they had multiples, threes, fives, whatever, but it made it possible for them to produce more of these. Oh, and by the way, this one has the Made in USA. Okay, and it also has a little bitty two right here, which I believe it does denote second shift. So I think you got to have a lid that says 8B7 to match it. They also made this in a chicken fryer, a Dutch oven, and a skillet. So I think across the board they saved a lot of space and it was a great idea because they were struggling at this time. Every company was looking for ways to cut corners and make it work. Now we have the actual number eight. Now it is also a Century Series. It doesn't have Made in USA. Still pretty slick. And if you notice this one right here has the Made in USA at the top. There is an entire set with the Made in USA in the middle. So I would like to put together a set of not Made in USA or without the Made in USA lettering. One with the Made in USA and also another with the Made in USA in the middle. But I'm still working on that. Now the Century Series of Birmingham Stone Range started in the 1950s. Thus century, mid-century. It was the middle of the century. Red Mountain went from 1930s to 1950s and I think there was a little bit of overlap because you have all these molds, there was no reason not to use them. So it's 30, 40, 20 years and maybe a little after that. Probably a little bit before that. I think they made some skillets in the 1920s just while they're getting ready to start up. Now, I can't guarantee that, but that's my personal opinion or even speculation. Now, they did not make a number nine in the Century Series. So the next up is the number 10, and it's a big boy. And we still have the, the pretty much telltale ridge and the teardrop hanger hole. This one is not a Made in USA, and uh, it actually has, still has some mill marks. It's kind of hard to see them, but you can see where it was milled when the light hits it just right and get a little closer. Of course, this has been seasoned over really well, so you won't hardly see them. Next one up is number 12. Now, the number 12s will have the helper handle. Now, it's not a whole lot of help, but a little bit is better than nothing. And it's got a little bitty hole where you could probably hang them up, or if you were cooking on a fire, if you had something with a hook, you could pick it up fairly easily. Now, the ridge is not quite as prominent. It's still got a little bit of a ridge. and still have the teardrop and the heat ring. 
This one right here is a Made in USA. So it feels a little rough. It's a newer piece. And on the inside, it's not been milled. It's a little rough on the inside as well. Next up is the number 14. And it also has a helper handle. And I purchased this one back in 1985 before I was ever into cast iron. And it's got a little bit of ridge, but not as prominent. And it is a big boy. Now, me and my wife, we purchased this skillet for $5, brand new. In about 1985, we purchased this from a vendor out of the back of his truck at a service station. <laughs> and uh, it's kind of smooth, but it's not been milled. We purchased this to make pizzas in it. When we picked this one up, I said, shouldn't we get two? And my wife said, no, we just need one, but it makes great pizzas. And I'm telling you, this pan right here was the one that got me started into cast iron. Now, even though we purchased it in, say, 1985 or 1986, it was about 2016 or 2017 when I decided to try to make biscuits like my grandmother, and I used this pan. And when I tasted the biscuits and seen how much fun it was to make them, I was hooked. Now, as you know, Birmingham Stove and Range actually started off with the Red Mountain series. And the Red Mountain series has a few things that are unique about them. One is these really large pour spouts. <laughs> now, there are some Red Mountains with smaller pour spouts, but the first ones had the large pour spouts. Now, this here is part of a, the S series. Now, it's got some issues. It needs to be uh, seasoned up a little better. But this is a 3S. But I do know the 3S is smaller than the 3. Now, this here is a number 3 Red Mountain. And you can tell Red Mountain because it doesn't have the descriptive size markings like the Century Series. It just says 3 and B. Of course, you have the ridge on the handle that's just like on the Century Series, the teardrop or raindrop hanger hole. You're going to see that with Birmingham Stove and Range all the way through their skillets. Same thing with the little S series. Now I do notice <coughs> the S series looks a little shallow compared to the regular Red Mountain. And the S series had three different ones. We had, you had the 3S, the 5S, and the, get it right, 7S. But here is the unique S series. And they're a little bit harder to find than the regular pieces. Now here is a notable piece. Now it is got the big pour spouts and here is a four number four skillet. Usually for some reason the Red Mountain number four skillets the four is always up a little bit. I don't really know why but we have the same teardrop hanger hole and ridge, but this is a rare little piece. They didn't make that many of these. A number four Red Mountain is worth about 400. Well, nowadays, more like 325, 350. You could probably get them for 300, maybe even 275 or 250. I was fortunate enough to find this one for 250, but it was purchased in a bundle, which made it a little bit cheaper. If I bought it outright, probably would be about $300, $350, but it was part of a bundle, so I got a little bit cheaper, and at the time I couldn't afford to go any higher anyway, so. Number four is rare. Number five, now I have this little hand-scribed number five Red Mountain, which has got some sand shift in it, which is really interesting if you ask me. And it's got a little hand-scribed C right here and a little bitty Z off to the side which I think is really interesting. To me the more marks the more interesting the more interesting the more collectible. So <clears throat> I do not have a number six in the Red Mountain. That's one I'm looking for. Here is a number seven Red Mountain 
and it's the same, same ridge, big pore spouts. It's got a Y, mold mark, really neat. This is really interesting. I have a number eight Red Mountain, and it's got, like I said, more marks, more interesting. It's got eight dot dot X D. And the eight is not even straight down. It's way up on the side. And I do believe that this is one of the earlier Red Mountains. I would say they started in the 1930s, and I believe this was right there at the very beginning because of the hand scribing. Wouldn't even be surprised to say a little bit before the 30s. Like I said earlier, I think they had their pattern shop already up and going before then, and I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't make a bunch of runs before 1930. Now, this is just speculation. And I believe the earlier ones will have the hand scribing. Back to this little number five. It's hand scribed. It's very, very cool. Like I said, I don't have a six. I got the seven. I have the eight. I don't have a nine red mountain. <laughs> I'm still on the lookout for the number nine. But I do have a number 10. And it is straightforward. It just says 10. <laughs> and it's got all the other telltale signs. I don't have a number 12 red mountain either. And last but not least, this one here is my 14. This is my 14 red mountain. If you notice, the ridge is almost non-existent. But it is definitely a red mountain number 14. It's a nice piece. I just wanted to share some of my collection with you today and that is the Century Series skillets and the Red Mountain skillets. Now I don't have a complete set of the Red Mountain but I'm working on it. And I hope that you've enjoyed it. If you have, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and I promise I'll keep more of them coming. You can also follow Cast Iron Cookware on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check out the Cast Iron Cookware Facebook group. We have some great members there, and they'd love for you to be a part. You can also sign up to receive emails from Cast Iron Cookware. I send them out every couple of weeks, more like every three or four weeks, but I try to get one out at least once a month kind of letting you know what's happening and what's coming up with this channel and, and just things that are going on in general that I don't have time to share on the videos. And if you would like to try Easy Beasy Cast Iron Seasoning, check out cicookware.com. That's where you can find this product. And I'll be honest with you, I think it's the best product on the market and the best delivery system on the market. If I didn't think so, I would try to change it. So thank you so much for checking that out. I just want to say thank you once again for watching Cast Iron Cookware. Before you go, I just want to share something with you really quickly. In Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, it says, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. I just want to say share the word and be a blessing.